Inside Science. What do self-driving cars, VR headsets, and face recognition software have in common? They all rely heavily on GPUs. GPU stands for graphic processing units, which are kind of similar to CPUs but focuses on processing graphics. And as today's CPU beginning to、uh, reach its limits, we need to look into、uh, new kinds of hardware and software solutions in order to satisfy our ever-growing needs for more powerful computers. And we'll learn about those things today.、Uh, I'm at the GPU Technology Conference in Washington D.C. today. Let's go see what they got. Besides all the products showcasing、uh, self-driving cars,、uh, which was basically the central attraction of the conference, there were also many other exhibits showcasing、uh, things like pattern recognition software, realistic simulations, and of course,、uh, virtual reality demos. Because nowadays, you can't really call yourself a tech conference without some sweet, sweet VR demos. So, cue the music. But other than just cool gadgets and video games, what can all these new technology really give us? And the answer has everything to do with artificial intelligence and what's known as deep learning. 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 But wait a minute, what's deep learning? Well, let me answer that by asking you a question: What exactly is learning? For instance, how can you tell that this is a cat? You might say,、uh, "Just look at it; it's a cat." But how exactly do you know that? And more importantly, how do you teach a computer that? Would you tell it to look for specific features like the paws or the ears or the eyes or the shape of the head? And that's exactly what programmers back in the days have to do by writing a whole bunch of individual classifiers. And as you can imagine, that didn't work so well because that's not how we know that this is a cat. We just know that this is a cat because we've seen cats before. So now, with deep learning, instead of writing individual classifiers, programmers construct an artificial neuron network that we can train by just showing the computer examples. Now, this wasn't possible until just a couple of years ago, because it's only recently that we have amassed so much data on so many things, especially pictures of cats. Here, you can actually see a deep learning computer in action. When I put a toy golden retriever in front of the camera, I can cycle through all these brighter neurons manually, and each of them、uh, tells me how the computer is now comparing the toy dog with examples that it has seen before. And it breaks down the pictures in many different layers and many different ways by contrast and color and shapes and many other criteria not shown here. And this multi-layer structure is also kind of where deep learning got its name from. But the software is only part of it. You would still need hardware that's powerful enough to run these programs, which in this case are the GPUs. Now that we can make a computer learn without giving it explicit instructions, this opens up all kinds of possibilities for future applications. An obvious one would be pattern recognition software, which have uses in、uh, self-driving cars, uh, you know, to uh, photo and video tagging, to、uh, like locating individual cancer cells in lab samples, or even finding a stranded hiker in a vast landscape. Another obvious application will be、uh, for anything that has to do with artificial intelligence, but that's a whole entire topic for a different episode. 